so guys these are the two ICs that we will be using that is HT12D and HT12E the HT12E will be the transmitter and HT12D will be the receiver now both the ICs have 18 pins as you can see from 1 to 18 from 1 to 18 the VDD of both IC will go to 5 volt the VSS will be grounded the A0 to A7 pin of HT12D and HT12V should match that means if you connect the A3 of HT12D to ground then you have to connect the A3 port of HT12E to ground otherwise what the HT12E IC will transmit the HT12D trans receiver will not receive that because the address will not match the 80 to A7 did A this is 8 bit address should match for both the ICs then only the transmission and the receive process will be successful now you can see there are four channels in both the ICs this is D8 to D11 in HT12D and this is AD11 and AD8, AD9, AD10 so these are the four channels we will be using only one channel that is the pin 10 of both ICs that is D8 now I will go come to this letter look at this this oscillation 1 and oscillation 2 of HT12D will be connected to a resistance that is 47k and the HT12V oscillation 1 and oscillation 2 will be connected and showing in inside the IC that will be 1 mega ohm whenever the transmission can happen that means the ICs are connected with each other the VT pin of HT12D that means the RX IC will be high that is plus 5 volt whenever the transmission and receiver part of the IC of the system is working properly now this TE pin indicates that enable the transfer transformation process that means you have to connect the TE pin I'm writing here the TE pin will be grounded to start the transmission process so it will be grounded the trans transmission of TX will happen from this pin pin 17 that is D out from here the transmission will happen and here the pin 14 pin that is D in here it will receive the trans transmitted data into the IC now we will do it in wireless method so we will use a 434 megahertz RX TX I will come to this later that's it with the ICs now we will see how to connect it with the 434 megahertz RXTX look this RX and TX the TX part will have three pins VCC data ground as simple as this and the RX part will have four pins VCC two data and one ground we will have to use only one data anyone you can choose this VCC will go to 5 volt ground grounded same for the RX pin sorry now 
we will connect the D out pin of transmitter to this data. So D out will go to this data pin and we will connect the D in pin that is pin 14 here. So the data will, re will be received by this and it will come at D in pin 14. So that's it with the circuits. So now let me tell you how it works. I told you that I will come to this D8 and AD8 pin later. Now it's time. What happens that whatever the state of pin AD8 to AD11 is in the transmitter part, that will be same in D8 to D11 in the receiver part. That means if you connect this AD part to ground, this D8 will be automatically connected to ground. That means it will give zero state, that is zero volt state. Otherwise, if you let AD9, it is opened. It is neither connected to 5 volt nor grounded. That means the D9 pin will be always 5 volt output. And if you connect this AD9 also to the ground, then, then the D9 will be grounded also. So that's how this transmitter receiver works. Now what I am done that I have connected a micro switch to this AD pin. Okay, like this. Let's this is ground. this is the switch this is connected to AD8 now in a normal condition this AD8 pin is open you can see so D8 pin of the receiver part will be high and I have connected a speaker in the D8 part like this This negative side of the speaker, I've connected it with the D8 pin. And the positive part, I have connected to the 5 volt. So whenever the AD pin, AD8 pin is not connected to ground, this D8 pin is high. That means no potential difference will be there. So the speaker is off. And whenever the AD pin is connected to ground, that D8 pin will be grounded so there will be 5 volt potential difference and the speaker will sound make sound so that's how this calling bell works now we can see that vt pin is low because the i have disconnected the battery now see if i connect the battery the vt pin will be high and this red led will glow look now i'm connecting the battery for transmitter side now I will connect the battery for the receiver side. See, the LED is on. That means that the transmitter and receiver is both connected to each other. So let's demonstrate how the calling bell works. So this is the transmitter part. This is the receiver part. You can see the board, breadboards and all the batteries circuits are separated. Nothing attached each other. Now if we press this micro switch here, I have connected. Look, you can hear the bell. It is coming from this buzzer and you can also see the LEDs glowing. And you remember that I told you that VT pins goes high whenever the circuit is completed 
and the receiver transmission process can happen so this is connected to the vt pin it is glowing that means that uh, receiver and transmitter part are connected to each other